Hi, my name is Steve Isaacs. I teach video game design and development at William Annan Middle School in Baskin Ridge, New Jersey. I also teach a version of the course online for a, a few different places. Um, I've been teaching game design and development for about, well, really for about 15 years in, in one way or another. And now I teach a full um, semester-long eighth grade course as well as a seventh grade exploratory course in, digital, uh, in game design and digital storytelling. Uh, and I find the, the kids, of course, you know, love it. They're engaged. They're um, learning such a, a great variety of skills. Uh, first and foremost, there's a lot of design thinking and iteration involved in every aspect. Uh, as the kids design their games, build their prototypes, have peers test and give feedback, and then continue that process, they're getting that experience of seeing their game through somebody else's eyes, which is teaching them you know, pretty amazing skills about what it's like to design for an audience, whether it be a video game or anything they would be doing out in the real world. Uh, there's also a huge collaborative element, which I think is so valuable. The kids um, can work in design teams. And as the course evolves, what I really like to see is that kids kind of start to specialize and find their niche within this, which could be graphic design, could be sound engineering, could be more of the coding or programming side, could even be the narrative um, storytelling components. And as they start to develop their niche, they start to see what it really feels like to be part of a design team and work you know, with their peers to develop a product that everybody has a, a valid stake in. Uh, another, another thing that's been really important to me is to provide a studio-like environment for my students. So they have a lot of tools available. There's a limited amount of instruction, but my goal is always I want to teach the kids how to generally use the tools and then have them expand upon that on their own. Um, my, my biggest goal is that by the end of my course, all my students know more than I do about whatever tools we're using. Uh, you know, and I always explain that in that I want the kids to continue being excited about creating games. I don't want them to think the only things they were able to do were things that they were taught in class. So in that regard, I see myself as a facilitator, um, very much a co-learner. Um, I think the kids see how excited I am about learning. Everything I'm teaching, uh, you know, I've been self-taught the same way the kids are learning. You know, I'll go out to YouTube, I'll go to other, you know, to tutorials, wikis to learn things. When they're trying to add something to their game, we'll work a little bit together to find, you know, where they can find the resources they need. And, and that process is, uh, is, is really exciting and I think important in education as, you know, I, I truly hope that the modeling is uh, modeling lifelong learning and that's what the kids are taking away. Uh, another thing that happens in my classroom is that the kids have opportunities to extend their learning beyond the main activities we do through extension activities. And in that, they have opportunities to learn on their own how to code, to create games in, with other platforms like Project Spark for Xbox, or they can learn tools to create text-based adventures um, based on a story they will have written first. Uh, they're learning to make game controllers with the Makey Makey. And all of these things, they're generally going about by learning first, by watching somebody else do something, creating maybe a copy of what they have seen, and then designing and building their own. And, and basically, that's the structure most of my class takes. And uh, I love my job. I love uh, the kids I work with. I, I think I'm very fortunate to be doing something that the kids are so excited about as well as something that I'm so excited about.